What's up guys, Taylor Whips, and today we're going to be making a rear diffuser on the Mazda Speed 3. Now, next to me you're probably wondering what is this? Okay, well, this is a bathroom panel door divider. So basically you'd be sitting down taking a crap, you see this next to you, you would never think about using it as a rear diffuser. Me, on the other hand, I see a perfect opportunity to use this giant flat piece of metal to make a rear diffuser for my Speed 3. Um, there's a couple different things. I was looking at it and back from my sheet metal days, I noticed that this is just pressed um, metal on metal, just clamping it together. There's some kind of a deadening inside, so we're going to figure out what is inside of here that um, fills in the hollow gap in between this. But when I saw this, I was thinking a perfect sheet of metal to go underneath of the Speed 3 and then I can use some of that ABS plastic as fins or whatever, extra touches, whatever. So I'm probably going to paint this black and get it uh, mocked up and probably uh, use a jigsaw or something and cut out a template. So what we're going to do, we're going to uh, get this apart, we're going to open it up, separate it, figure out what's inside and see if that's any use to us. And then uh, we'll, get, we'll get started from there, uh, marking out, cutting it, uh, mocking up, seeing exactly how I want this thing to look. And like I said, we can use that ABS plastic um, here when we need it. But right now I'm going to focus on getting, uh, getting these two panels separated. The bottom panel is kind of junk, but this side should work for what I'm trying to do. Alright, so basically I just have this thing propped up on a trash can. So it's uh, kind of wobbly, so just be careful you don't lean too much on it. You don't want any of your tools or any the sharp metal edges cutting you when it falls. Um, basically what I did, I'd get like a hammer and I kind of squeeze it in sideways and uh, tap it in. Get it spread apart a little bit. You leave some room in there. You get your big screwdriver. You come in here and you uh, you pry it right apart. And you just work your way down and get these things separated. About like that. And uh, I found a uh, a good way to continue going without having to separate it. You take it right here and you fold it up, fold it down, and then you can move on. Next part, get it out there a little bit, up, down, and it'll uh, it'll continue to pull out for you. Make sure you don't pull off your trash can. And then it comes off like that. Almost break off the sweat. Bend it a good amount of ways, pull it off, bend it, pull it, bend it, and that was the last one. So we're about to pull the trash can. Let's uh let's can't, um, open this up. Get along just fine here on our own. Would you offer it? another money mind? Oh, you wanna rob me blind? Well, I don't know this time. Oh, don't wanna just a liar.
All right guys, so I have it jacked up on both sides, maybe eight inches off the ground, enough to fit a stool underneath there to lay this across so it's about as close as it is going to get to where it will actually be. Um, I have it marked out over here. There's two little holes in the bumper. You might not be able to see them, but they're um, they're like right underneath here in the corner. So this will be able to uh, bolt into part of the bumper right there for some more support. I'm going to measure the halfway point, which is uh, 70 or uh, it's 57 and a half inches across. I'm going to go right in the middle, about 29 or so, and uh, mark that. And then off of that, I'm going to take some sharpie, make some more measurements, and kind of make this kind of a boxy, um, more squared off rear diffuser. And then I'm actually probably going to end up doing that with the front. I think. Personally, it's a little bit too round, but hey, that's the beauty of it being ABS plastic and me doing what I did on purpose, which was making it bigger than I wanted to or in, or wanted to to begin with. So in case later down the line, I wanted to change it, I could. So I'm probably going to uh, square that off eventually too, but it's uh, centered up about perfect right now. I'm going to make some marks. And All right, guys, so this is what it looks like so far. I have it still propped up underneath there. I kind of measured out. Um measured out kind of what it's going to look like so imagine that just being um well it's kind of, it was kind of crooked because i took it out but um imagine that being like that cut out painted black i think it looked pretty good um so my ideas was for how to make this um attachable and detachable um as often as i want if i ever want to take it off go on like a long road trip or whatever if i want to put it on go to a car show car meet whatever um, I'm thinking about getting some flat stock and drilling holes in my hitch and then bolting flat stock to the bottom of this and have it run all the way back along the length of the diffuser and then bolt the diffuser and the flat stock to the hitch underneath there and then like I said I have my other mounting points on either side of the bumper. Alright guys, we're uh, gonna get start cutting. I know I look goofy with these earmuffs on, but this is all I have right now. And uh, definitely wear these and safety glasses are gonna be really loud. Have a second person handy to help hold the material down. It'll shake violently just like the uh, front splitter did. And I'm recording this because I feel really bad that I lost the footage on the front splitter. So enjoy me cutting this. Okay, now you can really see what it looks like um, cut up and placed about where it should be. It's not perfect, I just threw it under there, it's off a tiny bit, but it definitely looks pretty good from 
from this angle and being black with some fins underneath of it I'm sure it will look extra extra good looking so I think I'm going to roll these or pound these uh, the part where this sealed to the other part of the door I think I'm going to pound those back and fold them underneath that way it will keep the rigidity of the corners of this because you can see how it's flimsy over here but over here where this is it's definitely sturdy wherever you bend metal or give uh, metal different bends it helps to strengthen it so I think I'm going to try to keep those there and roll them, uh, roll them and pound them underneath so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to run to the store get some flat stock and then we'll be back to do everything else so I pounded over the edges. I have it set up on like a little easel thing. Um, you can't really even tell from this side that anything's really changed except for the paint chips. But on the back side, you can see that I uh, folded it over some of the spots. It was easier just to take that other piece and get it flat, like where they were just dependent on how it was crimped. But she's definitely coming along pretty good I think I'm going to uh, run to the store now and get some stock and maybe some hardware depending on what we need so we'll do that all right guys let me um show you what I picked up I got a nice piece of stock steel um there is specs on it somewhere let me find them okay right here we are a quarter inch thick by one and a half inches wide three feet long um, you can see right here I already marked off this is the length which is eight inches of the actual hitch so in that eight inches I am just drilling some randomly spaced out holes I'm gonna take it downstairs use the drill press and drill those out come stick it up underneath there and uh, mark underneath there with sharpie and then drill drill those out and then I'm probably going to see about how far I want to extend it out and then cut cut it off, turn it sideways and have it run this way, um, probably underneath and then give it a slight little bend. So it'll come basically like this on the splitter and then it'll have a piece to go on sideways to help hold it wobbling and stuff. Give it a little bit more structural integrity. Okay, so this is about going to be the size that I'm drilling out. So, I mean, it's not the um, biggest bolt, but three of them should do the trick. And if at any time I do need to make it bigger, like I said, this is going to be completely removable. I can take them right off and drill them bigger, use a bigger bolt. But it just came out of this pack of hardware right here, so... I got it, I'm gonna use it, let's go. All right, um, not really sure exactly where I left off, but I have drilled out a couple holes on here. I decided I'm not gonna use this middle one because there's really no point. And if I wanna be able to remove it somewhat easily, it's gonna be hard to get my hand all the way down in the middle of that, considering it's about eight inches long. I have to use some kind of a magnet or something to hold it nut on there to get it started anyway so um middle hole not going to use uh already drilled a hole into this and then i just use this as a guide to get that hole i'm hoping it matched up it's kind of difficult to uh because you have to have it placed exactly how you want it then you have to try to mine the holes i had to pull like a little scribe uh down this one and then poke it down there and then lifted the thing up to about as close as it is going to sit on here and i scraped it and then marked it with a sharpie and drilled it out so I'm about to mock this up for like the 30th time, but now that I have both the holes drilled and this strip of stock steel running along the back of here, um, it should stay on there pretty good and hopefully I can get it working. So I'm going to try to do that right now. Alright guys, so it's the next day. I pulled the Mazda back out of the garage because I buttoned everything up last night. You guys didn't need to see that, but... Actually, what did happen last night, I went and got a uh, framework underneath the diffuser welded. So now you can see um, this part will be sticking out the rear of the car. And then this right here is what is bolting to the hitch underneath. So mount this way onto the hitch. And then the guy that welded it up just had some like random metal and 
uh, stuff laying around, so he tacked that on there. So this thing is like super sturdy now, like this thing's not going anywhere. And I already painted, painted that side black. Uh, drilled out my holes in the corner for mounting to the bumper. And you can see he, uh, he burnt through really bad right here. It was like really like raised up and same with like a couple spots down there he burnt through. But I grinded it down and thankfully, 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 um, this spot right here gets covered up by the hitch just barely though. So it was a very close call on that, but I'm glad it, uh, it actually didn't end up going to hurt me too bad. So I'm going to get some paint on this thing and then we're going to get some fins worked out and we're going to install this bad boy. All right, guys, we got the sun out here baking these, uh, these little fins away that I made. You can see I just made a, uh, a little triangle square thing. I guess it wouldn't be a triangle. It would have been if, if, uh, man, it's really hard to see on this black. It would have been if I continued those parts to angle into, uh, one corner, but that's way too long considering the framework I have underneath here. Second coat of paint on the diffuser, first coat on the fins, but the fins probably only need one coat. And then I'll do like a third coat around the uh, perimeter of the diffuser just to make sure because that's the part you're going to see. You're not really going to see any of that in here at all ever. So I'm going to get a nice coat of paint on the outsides and that'll be the third coat. Call it good. Um, right now I only have four fins. That other one is just a, a little test piece to see how paint came out on the rough side of it. Um, I don't know. Four fins probably isn't enough. But, I wonder how many would be, one, two, maybe six, I bet. If I make two more, I'm sure, I'm sure I can get two more to work. I might make these ones a little bit bigger and put, put those two right in the middle. Yeah, let's do that. Alright guys, so I'm going to show you exactly how I bent it. I have this tool right here. Not really sure what it's called, but this is what it works for right now. I just put it about a quarter inch in along the side and I'm going to heat it up down here with a torch. Don't want to stay in one spot for too long. Just make sure you run right along that line and then you'll see it'll start to bubble a little bit and uh, it'll start to get weaker and bend for you. And right when we get to that bend point we're going to uh, snap it down. You can see it's starting to fold now. I'm not even putting any pressure on it. Fold it over. Now this one's a little bit more difficult because the other ones, the bend was only as long as my tool. But this one, I have to obviously move it. Then I'll hold it up against the uh, the ground right here and make sure when it cools, it's at a perfect 90 degrees. See, so just pinch that piece down. It doesn't really stay hot for too long. So after a couple seconds, she'll be golden, just like that. Okay, so right now, as you can see, I have four fins installed. I have two bigger ones right here, two smaller ones right there, and basically all I did was line it up by eye, self-tap it, and well, you can see the bend down there. Everything is pretty dang straight all the way across the board. So I'm pretty pretty happy about all that. Um, I guess I'll just do this side, and then we'll get it put up underneath there and see how she looks. All right, all right, all right, guys. This is the final look at what the rear diffuser consists of. Painted it all black, painted the fins black just to make sure they match perfectly with the paint that I used on the metal. Um, you can see there's the hitch right there. I got one bolt in there. There's another one way back ways. And uh, it bolts up right down there. And then this framework that I have underneath here worked really, really well. And the holes that I drilled previously for the ones that came down the bumper matched up almost perfect. So those are down there. And uh, yeah, this thing's basically like set. So I think what I'm going to do right now is um, I think I'm going to set it down on the ground so you guys can get a look of what it looks like on the ground. But first... Let me get this Taylor Whip sticker put on it while it's up here in the air. You guys did not know these stickers are on sale. DM us on Instagram at Tailored Whips and you already know we'll get these out. I think we're going to do like a promotional sale right now because the rear diffuser is installed and is looking so sexy. We're going $5 shipped anywhere in the world 
right here. We have white and then we have this chrome and we have banners too. So hit us up, stickers on sale, DM us on Instagram guys. I'm gonna get this thing on the ground and show you what it looks like. Alright guys, thank you so much for following me along in this build for this diffuser. Like I said, this is completely DIY. Any of you guys can do this yourself. You don't have to follow my steps exactly, but if you're in the right direction, you're going to look something like this, which is, uh, in my opinion, pretty awesome. This is almost what I envisioned 100% from the beginning, before I even started, before I even knew what material I was going to use. So, I hope you guys enjoy. Please subscribe and like this video if you want to see more stuff like this. Peace out. Alright guys, I think we ran into our first problem. I can't even back out of my driveway. Literally, this is against the ground right here. Like bad, like all of these. Like that's in a like I'm gonna break this thing off. This isn't gonna be good.